Welcome to St. John's United Methodist Church online worship service for Sunday, May 24th. It is the seventh Sunday after Easter. It is also Heritage Sunday. We're very proud of our Swedish tradition here at St. John's and normally we would have a service that would be reflecting that. Uh, because of the current pandemic situations, we're not able to do quite as much as we would like to do with these sorts of special celebrations, but I do think it's important that we mention that and highlight that uh, we were originally a Swedish Methodist church. We are United Methodist now. We had a single board meeting this past Monday and it was decided that we would wait until uh, the end of the summer before we would try and reopen regular worship services. We will continue the online services and the parking lot services. Those will generally be the first Sunday of the month and will be communion services. We may uh, do a special one from time to time, but uh, we will continue to do the online services. The church is open on Sunday mornings from 11 to 11.30 if you'd like to come in for a time of prayer. So thank you very much for tuning in, and now let us worship the Lord. Shirt. You're embarrassing me. Oh, well, I think you look very nice. Thank you. Well, I have I have something for you today. I have a stick. Are you feeling? Are you feeling? A stick. Of, yes. A stick. Oh, I know this one. <laughs> throw it. I'll go get it. Well, I'm not going to throw it. Yeah. No, I'm not going to throw then it. Then why do you have a stick? Because I want to see how strong you can be. So I'm going to say, Stacy, so do you think you're strong enough to break this stick? Yes. Let's see. How about you, Boomer? You think you could break this stick? Sticks are oh, not yeah. for breaking. <laughs> he would only chase the stick, I'm sure. Could you break this stick? Well, let's see. Give it a shot. Throw it, Stacy. Throw it. Oh, there it is. Can you break it again? Yeah, just like that. Breaks that it in two pieces. Well, I'm going to hide it. I'm going to put it in my pocket so you can't get it. Okay, now. It's a bundle of sticks. Now these sticks are just like the one you just broke. See if you can break the bundle. Oh, not oh, so easy, huh? Yeah. 
Could you break a bundle of sticks? I wonder if I could break a bundle of sticks. Let me see. No, I can't break it either. But you know, these sticks can teach us a lesson, a really important lesson about our families, about our church. Stick together? Exactly. You know, some people say, I can be a Christian, but I don't have to go to church. Yeah. Maybe true. Do you know anybody ever said that? Um, I've said that. You've said that. Well, the thing is, that a, the church is not just the building. The church is all the people in it. The men, the women, boys and girls. And they come together. Do you know why? Why? Um, mm -hmm. To gather up and um, talk to Jesus and God. Exactly. They come to pray together and learn mm -hmm. together. But importantly enough, they also come to support each other. Because, you know, if you were a Christian out there by yourself, you'd be like that stick. It was all by itself. It's easy to be broken, easily to be drawn away. But when you've got other people with you, you can't be broken. You can't be broken, exactly. And that's, that's the lesson that we can get from these sticks. In our Bible, Lord, Bible story today, Jesus had the same worry about the disciples. He was worried. You know why? They were not throwing sticks. They were not throwing sticks. But that's not why he was worried. Jesus was worried because he was about to leave them. And he was worried because they were going to be out in the world and he didn't want them to be tempted by Satan or anything like that. So he prayed that they would do what? Be a um, group together. Be a group together. They would encourage each other and support each other and make sure that nobody got broken. Hmm. No sticks were broken. No. You can't chase the sticks. Just throw it. Just no, throw boomer, one. no Just you can't chase. No. In fact, here's what I want you to do. I want you to say a prayer with me. Okay? Okay. okay. Dear Jesus, thank you for knowing us. Thank you for loving us, and thank you for protecting us when we're all alone by giving us our friends and our people of the church to support us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 And Bye. thank you for sticks. <laughs> Just thank one. you, and goodbye. Bye. Bye.
We come now to a time of shared prayer together. The update on Tina Lahan is that the surgery went well and she is recovering. Uh, several weeks of healing and therapy still to go, but uh, Tina and Jean have both expressed their gratitude and appreciation for all the love and prayers that have been offered to them. It's my understanding that our students are doing online AP testing. That's generally a high time of stress for them, but with the addition of being online, uh, some of them are probably just freaking completely out. So we need to pray for them and their parents. Please continue in your prayers for our men and women who are first responders and their families, for our military people, uh, those who are in service and their families, join with them in praying for peace. Pray for our leaders and elected officials as they search for answers. Help them to be wise in their decisions. We pray for the world, for our nation, for our state, for our communities. We pray for our church and our brothers and sisters in Christ. We pray for all of the churches. Somebody asked me the other day, why do we pray for just the Catholic Church when we have the Apostles' Creed? And actually we're praying for the universal church, the entire body of Christ without regard to denominations. And so uh, that's why we say that. But we, we need to be in prayer for the entire church. We need to be praying for those doctors and researchers, uh, the caregivers, as they're looking for answers and cures and vaccines. And we need to remember to give thanks. There are still blessings in the world. God is touching our lives every day. People are being healed, babies are being born, the sun is shining, the birds are singing, the flowers are blooming. Do not focus on just the negative things because that will make you sick. But remember to count your blessings and to give thanks. Let's bow for a time of silent prayer. Then we'll have a pastoral prayer leading into the Lord's Prayer. At this time, let us pray. Most loving God, life is about change, and boy, has our world changed of late. We are not always happy with the things that are different. Some of them are very challenging. Some of them are welcome, and they're beautiful things, and we accept them and look forward to them with excitement and anticipation, and others with dread and sometimes anger. Please strengthen us and help us to adapt and to do the things that we need to do in order to be the body of Christ in the world today, to share your love, to be alive and aware. We pray for those who are hurting, who are grieving, who are dying. We pray for the lost, the angry, the broken, the overwhelmed, the depressed, the suffering. We ask for healing. We ask for hope for guidance, for strength, for encouragement. We thank you, Lord, for those who have gone before us, who have made it possible for us to be in this place today, to have the faith because they lived it and shared it. Help us to be true to that calling, to live the faith that you have given to us and to share the love. Please hear our prayers, both spoken and unspoken, we offer them through the power and love of Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, power and the glory forever. Amen.
worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Holy, holy is he. Sing a new song to him who sits on heaven's mercy seat. Worthy is the Lamb. Our scripture today comes from the book, The Acts of the Apostles, chapter 1, verse 1 through 11. In the first book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus did and taught from the beginning until the day when he was taken up to heaven, after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself alive to them by many convincing proofs 
appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While staying with them, he ordered them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait there for the promise of the Father. This, he said, is what you have heard from me. For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom of Israel? He replied, It is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going, and they were gazing up toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. May God add God's blessing to the reading of his word. In addition to all the other things about this Sunday that are important, this is also Ascension Sunday. And so we remember that time when Jesus was taken up into heaven after his resurrection. It's interesting that this is another time when angels basically say, why are you people standing around just looking at stuff? I think that's important. You know, the first time that you do something important, like drive a car, or assume the responsibility of a new job, possibly your first real job, that can be a little scary. Or a little nerve-wracking. Do you remember the first time that you tried to merge onto a highway while you were driving the car? Or the first time that you started at a new school or a new job? Were you nervous? Were you anxious? Now, even though you had been trained, even though you had practiced this was the first time it was entirely on you to get it right. One of the most important pieces of advice I was ever given was given to me by an older teenager as I was getting ready to go to high school. And she said, do you remember when you went from, from grade school to, to, to middle school? I said, yeah. And she said, you remember how nerve-wracking it was and you didn't think you knew where anything was and, and you were going to miss lunch or not be able to find your locker or whatever and 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 after about a week or so it was just like old hat I mean you knew where everything was you weren't worried about that anymore I said yeah she said was it like that when you first started at grade school and I said yeah and she said well it's going to be like that at high school that first week you're going to be all nervous and everything but in just a few days it'll be like old hat and the reason for that is, is you're ready for it. You may not know that, but you're ready for that. It really helped as I began high school to know that. And then as I started college, and it's come in handy whenever I've had to do something brand new that was important. Now, as scary or challenging as some of these experiences are, it was important that you had to solo, as they say, in order for you to grow. If your mom is still walking you to college, when you get to college, you're not growing as a person, unless it's a very weird circumstance. There are times when you have to do it yourself in order to grow as a person. And the reason I bring that up is that in a similar fashion, in order for the church 
the body of Christ to grow and develop, Jesus had to ascend. There had to be a definite end to his earthly ministry. Because if Jesus had stuck around, the church would probably have never been more than Christ's support team. Um, he would do all the work and we would be in charge of, of scheduling appointments and getting lunch and, and those kinds of things, which while important are not really the significant work that Christ was engaged in. And that's not how God's kingdom is supposed to work. As Christ's body, the church in the world today, we have to have transformed hearts. We have to have changed lives. And that is unlikely to happen if we are never involved in Christ's good news. If we're always standing back on the sidelines, if we're always just providing assistance or support instead of actually being in the thick of it, doing the work, experiencing Christ's life-changing love. Now, God does not want us to, to just be Jesus' flunkies. God tells us over and over through scriptures and through the Holy Spirit God wants us to know we are the children of God. And that means something a lot more important than just a valued employee. We have rights, we have responsibilities. Now, even though I say the church had to solo, that's, that's not really the right word. Because we have never been alone. In fact, there's a, a hymn that I, I love to listen to, We Are Not Alone. We are never alone because the Holy Spirit is with us always. It has been there to guide us, to strengthen us, to encourage and to empower us. And through the power of God's Holy Spirit, the good news of the resurrected Christ has reached as far as Georgetown, Texas. All the way from that little speck of land, Galilee, Israel, that for a time physically didn't exist as a place, it's reached all the way over to here. That's amazing. We take that for granted. We think, well, duh, yeah, it's where we live. We wouldn't know if someone had not shared that, if the Holy Spirit had not been at work. When, when this building was being built by those Swedish-American Methodists, the Spirit was present and saying, this is something that you can put in place for those who come after and touch their hearts and change their lives. The Spirit has been with us to guide us. And it reminds us that we are connected, especially in a time when everybody is terrified of the pandemic. We, we cannot let fear be in charge. Even if we cannot sit down face to face and shake hands, we are still connected to the power of love, the power of Christ through the Holy Spirit. That's why things like communion are so important because it reminds us of that connection on a regular basis. But even if we were not able to share communion, it's still important for us to remember that connection because the Holy Spirit keeps it alive and vital every moment of our lives. Our part is tapping into that, being aware of it, claiming that power, and then exercising the gifts that God has given to us. We are connected. 
with all of our brothers and sisters in Christ, not only living today, but back through time into the past and going forward into the future. We are connected to brothers and sisters in Christ we have not even met yet. And that is why it is critical for us to remain faithful, to be encouraged so that we can share that courage with others. The work is not finished because God's will is not being done on earth as it is in heaven. We pray that. May God's will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That hasn't happened yet, so that means we're not finished. We still have work to do. There are still people who are hungry, who are broken, who are suffering. There is still evil and selfishness, hatred and prejudice in the world. And boy, is it creative. It seems that every day we find a new way to hurt someone. And that's not what God wants. That is not what God intends for God's children. As the body of Christ, it is our responsibility, our opportunity our challenge to do what we can to help and to heal to love and to care and to keep sharing Christ with everyone we can in every way that we can doing what is loving doing what is right until the day when Christ returns I don't know when that will be you don't know anybody that says that they know they're full of beans. If that's not a theological way to express that, but don't listen to them. They may be completely sincere in what they're saying, but Scripture tells us the angels don't even know. No one knows but the Father. And it doesn't really matter because if we are living with intentionality, if we are claiming Christ's love, if we are living our faith, it's like studying for a final exam if you are prepared for it you don't worry about it but if you're waiting to the last minute to kind of cram in all of the good stuff you've missed the point of it we cannot cram for our spiritual finals and if you try and live that way you are missing out on the blessings of being in connection with Christ right now and so many people don't understand that we're not waiting for heaven to come in order for our lives to be wonderful and filled with love and grace and peace and joy. That can happen in the world today, even in the midst of something like this pandemic. There is still love. There is still joy. The Spirit is still working. So be faithful encourage one another and allow God's Holy Spirit to lead us as we continue to proclaim the good news. God knows us. God loves us. Christ died and rose again that our sins might be forgiven, that we might have eternal life. That is the good news. And when we share that, by living that truth, by telling people about it after we have lived that truth the world has changed and eventually we'll reach the point where God's will will be done on earth as it is in heaven may all we do be in service to Christ forgave my sin in Jesus name I've been born again in Jesus name and in Jesus name I come to you to share his love as he told me to he said freely freely you have received you
power is given in Jesus' name in earth and heaven in Jesus' name and in Jesus' name I come to you to share his power as he told me to he said freely freely you have received free Thank you for watching today. I pray that something that you watched, heard, saw was a blessing to you that will strengthen and encourage you. Please share that. Invite others to tune in and watch what we're doing here. The church is still open, though in a different way than we have been in the past. If you need to call, if you have a question, call the church office. We will do what we can do. Our mission has not changed. If you have shared Christ's love in this past week through an intentional act of kindness or in some other way, raise your hand. Thank you. You are helping to make the world a better place every time you do that. So thank you for doing that. Please accept this blessing as we come to the close of our time together. As we prepare to go into the world to proclaim the good news of the risen Christ, May God fill us with love and laughter, with grace and peace. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.